Hi guys, I'm Brian Rogers Jr., commercial photographer and digital artist. I just made a brand new Photoshop compositing and digital lighting tutorial called Only in Twilight, and I think you're gonna love it. Here's a preview, check it out. All right, guys, welcome back to section four. This is digital lighting and atmospheric effects. This is where the really cool stuff happens. What we're gonna do first, we've got our image, we've got our bell pepper, we've got our back plate. Everything's looking pretty good so far. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build a sky panoramic image that we're gonna put in this background here. I think this is a really nice sky, but it's not the kind of sky that I want. I'm a really big fan of dramatic clouds. We're gonna go to Lightroom. And we're going to open up the sky images that you have in your downloads folder. So this is a panoramic image that I shot. These clouds were really cool. I didn't really have to do a whole lot in post-production to make them look like that. The main key here was to underexpose a little bit so I can get the detail in the clouds. That's why the foreground's a little dark. I wasn't shooting this as a landscape image by any means. I typically shoot backgrounds a lot. I like to have a big cloud library because you never know when you're gonna have a need to put some clouds in. So I've already processed these files. These are all JPEGs, but they're still going to uh, merge together pretty well. I'm going to select all of them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a new feature in Lightroom. We're going to merge these images together in the past, you had to do it in Photoshop, um, but Lightroom lets you do it right inside here now, so it's really helpful. Two ways to do it. You're gonna go up to Photo, Photo Merge, and then Panorama, or you could hit Control M and that'll do the same thing. Cool, so this looks pretty good. We've got three different options here. We've got spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. They're all gonna give us different looks. So let's go ahead and start with spherical. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Cylindrical doesn't look too bad. And perspective doesn't look too bad. Perspective is a little wider than I would like it to be. I want something with a little bit of cushion for uh, the vertical in our image. I think cylindrical looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. I'm gonna click Merge. I'm gonna let Lightroom do its thing. If you're not using Lightroom, you can easily open this up in Bridge or straight into Photoshop and merge this as a panoramic as well. By making this a panoramic image, this also gives us a lot more detail and a lot more uh, bit depth as well. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking your camera sensor and you're multiplying it so every image that you stitch together you're having more resolution for the final image. So you can see that it's taking a little bit longer to merge together than the HDR stuff that we did earlier. But it's worth it. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent. I'm not worried about the foreground, so you don't have to worry about that. I know that it's got a spherical look to it, but it's not going to affect our sky, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna open this up next in Photoshop. I don't really wanna worry about making this one a smart object because this file already is going to be huge. So I'm just gonna hit Command E, and that's gonna open this up in Photoshop. And what I wanna do right off the bat is I just wanna save this file. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my PSD folder and we'll just call it Cloudscape One Pano. That sounds good. Okay. 
Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that sky image over to our bell pepper image. Cool. Okay, so there are a couple of different methods we could do here. We could make a mask. We could try to make a selection here to select the background, adjust the sky, and then try to drop it in that way. But honestly, that's gonna be a lot of work and we really don't need to do that. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna change the blending mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that your layer is named. I'm gonna call this sky. I wanna put this in the backplate section. Turn that layer on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to change the blend mode of the sky. So let's go ahead and just cycle through our blend modes. I'm gonna make sure I've got the move tool selected by hitting the letter V. And I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I'm gonna cycle through my blending modes just so you can see what this looks like. It's gonna give us different results. Now the main thing is you don't wanna look at the foreground. The foreground isn't really relevant. You just wanna look and see how those clouds are gonna blend into the sky. Some of them are terrible, some of them look great. So I already know which one I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with multiply. It's gonna give us the look we want. What we need to do next is we need to hide the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer mask to this. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave it how it is. I'm gonna make sure my uh, foreground color is set to black and I'm gonna grab the gradient tool by hitting the letter G. And I'm gonna probably start from about man, this bottom section and just kind of drag my way up. And what I'm gonna do is I just wanna hide the cloud layer. And I can just blend that into the background. I don't even really have to worry about having a perfect selection back there. So let's go ahead and turn that off and on. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the mask by hitting the backslash key, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see that it's blending right in here on that horizon line, and that's perfect. That's what we want. I could take a little higher, so we'll go ahead and do that real quick and see what that looks like. Uh, that's not bad. It's a little more dramatic. It's a little softer. Maybe something in between. Okay, yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so what we wanna do now that we've got that blended in, and you can see how easy that was. It really was not hard at all. Every sky that you try to blend in is gonna be a little bit different. You can see that uh, the tones were somewhat similar. It was soft light, so the, the quality of light matched. If you were to take a blue sky with uh, some really white puffy clouds, it would be a lot harder to put that kind of sky in here. It could be done, but it would be a lot more work. So my suggestion is anytime you're gonna composite a sky, look at the quality of light because the quality of light really dictates how, how the image is gonna come together in post-production. You can see that by merging a panoramic sky, which has a ton of detail, bring it into this document, and playing around with a few blending modes and masks, we can easily replace the sky and it looks seamless. I mean, you, if I were to show you this image and you didn't know that I did that composite, you'd have no clue that it wasn't like that already, which is great. What I wanna do next is I wanna grab the sky layer and I wanna just bring it underneath some of my photo filter layers and see what kind of results I get. Let me go ahead and shut those off. Again, it would be a subtle change, but I want it to blend in a little bit more. Okay. I want it in between Photo Filter 1 and Photo Filter 2. If you remember correctly, Photo Filter 1 was our cooling filter. So if I turn that off, you can see it. That still looks cool too, I like that. But I wanna keep the cooling filter because I like the contrast of that warm and cool colors together. I just think it looks really cool. So I'm happy with that. So now that we've got our sky in, this is a really cool backplate. 
I'm happy with that. I think that looks really cool.